What's up everybody? Welcome to this video. In this one, we're gonna be learning how to make this in two different quick ways. But first, let's get to the comment of the week. Thank you, design. This comment comes to us from your last video upload titled, Adobe is raising pricing again. Use this instead, in which you provide alternative options to Adobe that are either cheaper or free for users. Our comment of the week comes to us from Mr. Photo Dude Yo. He writes, if 50 pounds a month is expensive, then you are not running your business right. <laughs> this is such an amateur hour. He then goes on to drop some serious knowledge. Who said everyone can be a designer? This world is so entitled these days. People got sold this idea that you can do or be anything which is BS. We reached out to this week's selected winner, but it turns out he's actually a houseplant. Can you believe that design? Now I've seen it all. Thanks so much for the comment. You be sure to subscribe and smash that like button so you don't miss out on any great content. Back to you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. I hope you enjoyed the comment of the week. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, okay, so in this one, we are going to make a photocopy line uh, type piece of art. And uh, I'm going to start with this guy here. Now, this will work either way. I've isolated this guy uh, first because I want more control over sort of blurring him. If you don't know how to make selections, I'm going to link my selection brush video down below. I'll teach you everything you need to know about making isolations and selections um, so you can remove backgrounds and things like that. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I got this guy here and I want to turn him black and white because this is going to be a photocopy. So with him selected in the layers panel, I'm going to go down to my adjustments down here at the bottom and I'm going to pick black and white. When I do that, my black and white adjustment is going to appear here in my layers panel. and I'm just going to click on it drag it and hold it over top of the actual uh, isolation this guy here and you can see he's gone black and white and i can move these sliders around to make them a little bit darker uh, i'm just going to move them a little bit here just to make it a little bit darker and that's okay with me that's uh, all i'm going to do for now so now i have my uh, guy up here and i'm i also added a background so if you don't know how to do this let me delete this i'm going to go up to a layer new fill layer and when I do that in the layers panel, you're gonna see a fill layer up here at the very top and it kind of covers up that photo. So I'm gonna take my fill layer, click, hold it, drag it down below the guy. So now I have uh, the guy on top and this fill layer below. So let's do something with the fill layer first. Let's go over the layers panel and let's turn this guy off. And this photo is linked down below in the description, by the way, if you want to follow along. And with my fill selected, I'm gonna to go to the top of my layers panel here and there's actually a button that normally says opacity here. But if you put your mouse over top of it and you click on this little dot, it says switch, it changes to noise. If I grab this slider and I drag it all the way over, if I zoom in here, you notice these little dots appearing. I'll, I'll pull it away. So that's nothing and that's full. So it adds some noise to the background, which I want to do because I want this to look like a photocopy. So I'm pulling the noise, noise <laughs> to 100 on this one. So now I got my noise on my background. That's great. I'm going to turn this layer back on to get this guy back on here. So now I want to blur him. I want him to look, um, well, blurry, like a photocopy. So with him selected in the layers panel, I'm going to go up in my menu here to layer, new live filter layer. I'm going to go to um, blur, and I'm going to pick motion blur for this one. And when I do that, I'm going to get this little live motion box. And you can see in my layers panel here, I have the black and white, which I've made it already. And now I have this motion blur in here because this is a live filter. And the more I drag this radius up, you're going to see him start to blur. So I'm going to blur him all the way. I'm going to actually go into this box here and I'm going to change it to like 200 or 250 maybe. It'll depend on the photo you're using. And now he's totally blurry, which I don't want um, fully because well you don't know what he is so cool thing about live filter layers is they have built-in masks and if you don't know about masks what are you doing with your life uh, I got a full video on that a couple videos actually I'll link those below watch them love them tell your friends uh, someone said they might have been the greatest video on YouTube I think someone said that I thought I heard it might, might have been me in my sleep I'm not sure um, so with my motion blur selected in the layers panel here because there's built-in masks I'm going to go over to my uh, paintbrush over here, my brush. You can hit B on your keyboard. And painting in black, 
yes, black in the top right corner there. What I'm gonna do is go to the front of him and, and try to remove the blur off his face and off his body here, because I want him to look like he's he's moving in one direction, right? So he's, there's a bit of motion as he, as he moves forward. So I wanna remove the blur off the front of him. And all I'm doing is just taking my brush and just painting some of that away. So he looks a little bit blurry. Now I do want some blur on the front still, but just not as much. So cool. So now I've got this kind of movement. This uh, looks like he's moving forward, which is great. Um, now that I've got that, what I'm gonna do is go back to my layers panel. I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm gonna duplicate him. I want another copy. So to do that um, on a Mac, I'm gonna hit Command J. On a PC, you're gonna hit Control J. And you're gonna have two of them now in your layers panel, one on the top, one on the bottom. I'm gonna click on the one on the bottom and I am going to um, go back to my motion blur here and I am going to change it. So I'm gonna double click on it to change it. And I'm gonna turn the motion blur from 250 up to maybe 500. And when I do that, you can see there's more of a blur and now it's added some, a little bit to the front here, uh, which is good. I want a little bit of blur, but not too much. So that's good for now. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna keep it both that way. You could have just used the first version and just not painted away as much. That would work as well. I also wanted to add some additional blur. You can see if I take that away, it adds some additional blur to the back, which I want. <clears throat> okay, cool. So now we have a background. We have a guy that's blurred. Let's uh, add some of those lines so it looks like a real photocopy. So uh, I don't have anything selected in the layers panel. I'm gonna go back up to the top, up to layer. I'm gonna go to new live filter layer. This time I'm gonna go to colors and I'm gonna pick halftone. And when I do that, it's gonna go all crazy. You're gonna see halftone appearing at the top of the layers panel. And I'm gonna make a few changes here. I'm gonna change the screen from monochrome to line. And I'm just gonna play with these sliders. Every photo is gonna be different, but there's the cell size. If you see if I pull it all the way back this way, all the way up this way, um, you know, you just gotta make it look right for whatever photo you're using. So I'm gonna mess around with these sliders here and see what looks right. I want him to be visible still, but look slightly photocopied and smudged. But I want those lines to show. I'm gonna zoom in here. I want these lines to show as well. So maybe I would do something like, maybe something like this. I'm gonna zoom out there. So it looks a little, uh, you can see those lines if you zoom in here. You can also too in the background, if I click on the fill down here and I change it from white to like a little bit darker, you can see it kind of looks a little bit, you know, a little bit rougher, maybe more like a photocopy. So maybe I'll set it to a little bit off white, maybe something like that. Now the cool thing about this is even in a half tone in these live filter layers, I can apply a mask to this. And again, with masks, you can paint things away or uh, repaint them back in. So I'm gonna go to this half tone. I'm gonna go down to my masking button down in the bottom of my layers panel, click on that. And a mask is gonna appear at the bottom of the half tone here. And I'm gonna take my paintbrush and uh, painting in black again. I'm just gonna start slightly painting away some of this stuff because these lines maybe look a bit perfect. So I'm gonna maybe grab some of the corners where photocopies usually look a little bit rough. And just paint away some of these lines from the edges so there isn't like perfect lines all the way across because a photocopy wouldn't exactly have perfect lines. I'm just gonna paint away some edges here. Just a little touch, may not add too much, but I wanna paint some of those lines away just so it doesn't look so perfect. I'm gonna zoom out. So those lines, if I, if I remove them, you can see just a little something to make it look more like an actual photocopy. And now uh, we'll add some text and be done with it. So now that we've got that done, zoom in here. We got some good lines there. Some of them are removed here. He's blurred, which is good. He's kind of smudged. Uh, so now I'm gonna add some text. So I'm gonna go over to my text panel here on the left-hand side, the artistic text tool. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm just gonna drag out some text. And I want the text below him. So what I'm gonna do is grab the text from my layers panel, click, hold, drag it all the way down to just above the fill. I'll let it go. So now we have that. And what I wanna do is uh, mess with this uh, text a little bit so it looks photocopied and it looks like it's part of the art. So uh, let's take this word art. Let's go back up to the layers panel or layers uh, menu. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> new live filter layer. I'm going to blur this one. We're also going to put a motion blur on this one. And when that comes up, uh, I'm just going to drag this radius so it looks a bit blurry. Uh, maybe mm, let's do yeah about there. So I blurred that. I'm also going to fade it a little bit because I don't want it to be so dark. So with my 
text selected here in the layers panel. We go up to the top where opacity is here. I'm just gonna bring the opacity down a bit so the paper bleeds through a little bit. Maybe, maybe like 75%, something like that. And now that I have this text, I'm gonna add a couple more text, um, but I want all the settings to be the exact same. So I'm gonna duplicate this art uh, and just change the text. So you can hit Command J or Control J on a PC with it selected in your layers panel. And I'll get another one here and I'm gonna double click to change the text. And again, I'm gonna duplicate uh, by either Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. And we're gonna call this Art of War. I'm just moving this around to see how it looks. Maybe something like that, and I'll click on him. <clears throat> Maybe make him a bit bigger. Rotate him. Maybe something like that. So that is our first example here of how to make a photocopy look uh, with scanned lines. You could also duplicate your halftone uh, to make it deeper. You could, again, you can change the color to a little bit darker if you want it to look a little bit, uh, little stand out a little bit more, more of like a darker damaged photocopy. But that is the um, built-in way to do it through Affinity Photo. Now let's look at a quicker way. Okay, so the quicker way to do this um, is you're gonna, you'll do the same steps as you take the guy, you duplicate him, you add the motion blur. <clears throat> you can add your text and fade it and blur it as well. But you can just bring in these um, PNG overlays uh, for bad photocopies or photocopy overlines. Um, I brought one in here called Black Horizontal Lines. It's also linked down below. If you don't know how to do that, <clears throat> once you download it, you'll go to File, Place. It's gonna ask you where on your computer the file is and you'll just find it, hit place, and then you'll be able to drag it out. So I've got mine right here. And you can see when it's at the top of the layer stack, it just, everything is blurred out. You can't see anything. So the thing here to do is to change your blend mode. So I've got my horizontal line selected. I'm gonna go up to my blend modes right here. I'm just gonna go through my blend modes to see what makes sense, um, which version. So this one looks pretty cool here. If I pick screen, um, add looks pretty good. Overlay looks good. Um, so it's really just kind of what you're looking for. Every picture is going to look a little bit different. Uh, let's go with, I'm going to go with screen on this one, just for now. Uh, and obviously you could um, bring it, um, you know, make it less or more depending um, with your opacity. So I've got the, the black horizontal line selected at the top and I can just move this down this way or this way if I wanted more or less to make it look like a photocopy. So um, that's the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, that is the built-in way to add some lines and then there is just the quicker way if you get a, an overlay of a photocopy, put it over top of your text, blur your text, blur your subject, um, fade the text a little bit so it looks like it is actually um, on the paper. And uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, um, you know what those YouTubers say, they say uh, tap, tap, tap that like button and if you've never seen my stuff before, and if you're new, um, <coughs> hey, uh, welcome to the, the party. It's um, an exclusive party where um, only cool people go, so that's why there's not, <laughs> not many of us. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.